Hey folks, I'm Trent. In this video, I wanted to show you how to download and install Python as well as VS Code as an integrated development environment to do uh, application development in Python. Personally, I use VS Code almost every day. It's my favorite IDE, whether it's uh, data engineering, data science, or general software engineering tasks, I find uh, that it fulfills all of those needs really well. Now, if you're just getting started, VS Code can be a little intimidating just because of how feature rich it is and how customizable it is. Uh, I'm hoping that in this video, I'll convince you to give it a try and see if it's something that suits your workflow. Okay, jumping right into it, I'm going to be installing uh, Python and VS Code on a Windows 11 machine. And just as a note, I do have admin privileges on this machine. If you don't have admin privileges uh, on your machine, you may have a couple extra hurdles to jump through, uh, but I just wanted to note that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your favorite web browser and head over to python.org forward slash downloads. You'll be greeted with the screen like this. And what you want to do is grab the Python installer uh, on using this button over here. Now, this is sitting at Python 3.12.3 or Python version 3.12.3. Depending on when you watch this, this version number might have changed. But generally, on this page, the latest stable release is represented. So um, you can go ahead and download that. If you are looking for a specific version of Python, you can find that lower down on the screen uh, and download that installer instead. Great. So once you've got that installer, uh, you can head over to code.visualstudio.com in another window and go ahead and download the installer uh, for your specific operating system. Cool. So I've done that in the background uh, just to save us some time and uh, put that in my downloads folder. So you're going to want to go to wherever you saved the installer. And uh, the first thing we're going to install is Python. So you can go ahead and double click the installer for that. So we should be greeted with a, a setup wizard. And I'm going to go and select custom installation. Um, if you're not too worried about customizing the install, um, you can Go ahead and just go to install now. That will make things uh, a, a bit easier. But I'm going to go to a custom installation. And just going through this list, I'm not going to use idle. So idle is the integrated development environment for Python. It's kind of an, like an editor, like VS Code, uh, specifically for Python. It's very minimalistic. I don't generally use it, so I'm, I'm not going to uh, select that. And also, I'm not going to install Python for all users on this machine. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. Just going through these advanced options over here, one that you do want to select is adding Python to your environment variables. What this does is it adds the Python command um, to your uh, set of environment variables, which means if you use a command line like PowerShell, um, it will recognize Python as a keyword um, that you can use. So I'd recommend just uh, setting that. I'm going to leave the rest of these unselected. And then if you want, you can customize the install location of where Python is installed. It doesn't matter too much. Generally, I like to install it directly in C uh, without all these subfolders or subdirectories. Uh, but I'm just going to stick with the default installation for now, or the default path for now. Cool. So we're going to let that install. Okay, great. It's done installing. Hopefully through the magic of editing, I will spare you the pain of watching the loading screen like I did. But while I was staring at the loading screen, I remembered to mention that you could use Conda as well. I know a lot of people out there who use Python also like to use Conda. Uh, personally, I prefer installing Python directly like I just did here uh, because of the flexibility and control it gives me over my Python environments. Uh, but if you do want to explore Conda, um, it is a great option as well. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to take you through the setup I normally use. Great. So with the screen telling us that setup was successful, we want to actually check that Python was set up successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and open up PowerShell. 
and on PowerShell, let's zoom in here a little, on PowerShell to check our install, I'm going to type the keyword Python and we should be greeted with the Python interpreter. Um, you can enter in Python code directly here. So let's go ahead and type hello world and uh, it should run. Now I'm gonna quit out of here. So to get out of this, we're gonna type in quit, open and close brackets. And uh, we validated that we installed Python correctly uh, and that we've got the correct version over here, the, the version that we downloaded. So I'm gonna exit out of this. And now we're gonna go ahead and install VS Code and double click on the VS Code installer. All right, let's let it do its thinking. Okay, that should bring us to a screen that looks like this. This is the licensing agreement. Um, of course, you should read each and every line of this as you always do with every license agreement. Um, I'm gonna say that, yeah, I've totally read this. So I'm gonna say I accept the agreement. Cool, this gives us the option to customize where we wanna install VS Code. I'm gonna leave it as the default for now. Great, start menu folder. Yeah, I'm happy with it being under Visual Studio Code. Let's go through these options. Um, if you want a desktop icon uh, for it to hover on your desktop or sit around on your desktop, you can go ahead and select that. I'm not gonna do that, um, but I'm gonna look through these. Yeah, I don't really want any of this. Register code as an editor for supported file types, yes. And add to path as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this configuration. This add to path lets you use the keyword code on a command line to open up files, which is quite cool. Um, but you know, if you don't want that, yeah, you don't have to select that. Alrighty, validating our install. Looks good to me. Let's install that. Okay, I had to sit through the second uh, installing screen or the install loading screen, um, but we are finally done installing VS Code. And we're gonna go ahead and we want to launch Visual Studio Code. So let's hit finish. With VS Code opening up for the very first time, you should be greeted with a welcome screen. Um, this does change on occasion, um, but generally uh, it does welcome you with a tutorial. So let's go through that together. The first thing on our to-do list over here is to browse the different color themes. So uh, this lets you choose the different uh, color schemes you might want. Uh, I'm more of a dark modern kind of guy, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. Let's go to the next task. And this is on rich support for all of your languages. So this brings me to a really cool point about VS Code, and that's that it doesn't support any specific language natively. Uh, by that, I mean it's designed to support all types of programming languages. So things like Python, Java, Scala, um, almost any language you can think of. Um, that's what makes VS Code quite flexible, that you can support many languages in one IDE. Now, VS Code offers up uh, what are called extensions. And extensions let you customize VS Code the way that you want. Uh, and extensions also let you fine tune VS Code for a particular uh, language. So to show you the ones that I typically use for Python, we're gonna go ahead and click on browse language extensions. Um, to find the extensions tab, you can also uh, hit this icon over here on the left hand blade or hit control shift X and it'll open up the extensions marketplace. Now, something to note is that the marketplace um, can host or does host many different extensions by various publishers. Generally, trusted publishers get this blue check mark over here. And I like to stick to uh, uh, verified publishers as much as possible, um, especially if I'm working on a client machine or client project. Uh, but that's just uh, uh, something to note or a caveat that I wanted to mention. Now, for our purposes, for Python development, the uh, top two are actually exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and install Python language support. 
and the Jupyter Notebook support over here uh, because I like working with notebooks now and again. Um, this is quite a cool extension to keep around if you're doing some Python development, especially if you do uh, kind of data science type work. Um, you may be already be familiar with notebooks. Um, I really like the notebook setup in, in VS Code. Great, so we've got our extensions. Uh, we can check that off. Now let's go ahead to tune our settings. Now again, VS Code is highly customizable, which means that there are a ton of settings. Uh, I'm just going to show you uh, one of the settings uh, that I like to, to use, uh, and that is the autosave setting over here. Uh, I can see it's already picked up after delay. Uh, generally, this is set to off. Uh, but I like to have auto save on or after delay, meaning after a few milliseconds, um, any file that I'm working on is auto saved, meaning I don't have to repeatedly hit control S, which can get annoying. Uh, you can go through all the different settings over here if you'd like to customize that, uh, but I'll just stick um, to uh, just configuring the auto save feature. Great, so let's go to the next item over here. Sync across devices. Uh, I'm not gonna configure this right now. I'm just gonna stick to this machine over here. Then looking at unlock productivity with the command palette. So this is a really cool feature of VS Code. Um, if you hit Control Shift P, it opens up the command palette and you can uh, uh, do multiple tasks on uh, the command palette. So for example, reloading the uh, VS Code window. Um, or for Python development, you can say Python uh, select interpreter. Over here, if you're using multiple versions of Python, you can choose which interpreter you want to use. Uh, I'm just going to uh, stick with our default interpreter, so I'm fine with that. I'm just gonna hit escape and uh, go back to our uh, to-do list over here. Okay, quickly navigate between your files. Um, yeah, not too concerned about this. And then finally, there's a set of video tutorials, <laughs> much like this one that you're watching, um, that uh, can show you uh, how to use VS Code um, as effectively as possible. Uh, I'm just gonna mark that as done for now. <laughs> um, cool. Let us close these windows and open up a project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Explorer tab over here. And I've preloaded um, a, a project called My First Python Project. Um, if you want to do this, uh, one way is to hit the File tab, hit Open Folder, and select the folder that you want to use. Um, yeah, as, as I mentioned, I've preset this up. Um, I've got the folder here called My First Python Project. And you can select that folder. Just to demo um, a little bit of VS Code, I'm gonna go over to a file over here called hello world.py. Uh, and this just has a print hello comma world uh, in it. And if we wanted to run this, um, this bit of code, uh, we can go ahead and hit this play button over here. That should bring up our terminal uh, and run our code. Great, that executed and we've got hello world printed on our terminal. Now, something really cool um, about VS Code, as I mentioned earlier, I like to work with notebooks and we installed the Jupyter Notebook extension. Um, we can uh, uh, open up files of this type, IPYNB or IPython notebooks over here. If I open this up, we are greeted with a screen that looks very similar to Jupyter. Um, if you're familiar with that. And you can go ahead and run a block of code over here. Now, one caveat is that in the background, I've already installed the IPython kernel. If you try and run this for the very first time without the IPython kernel, you will get a, a little prompt box uh, that'll ask you if uh, you want to install IPython kernel. That's required uh, by notebooks. Um, in order to run them, it just lets you run uh, Python interactively, uh, which is required by a 
uh, notebook. Great, so we've now set up uh, Python, set up VS Code to run Python. What I just wanted to do to round this out or close this out is show you some of my favorite features or actually keyboard shortcuts uh, that I really enjoy in VS Code. Uh, so for multi-cursor editing, if you hit Control alt and press the down arrow, you can set up multiple cursors across many lines of code. So we can say many lines over here uh, and then reduce that number of lines by just kind of clicking away. Now, if I wanted to select the um, end of each of these lines, hitting Alt, Shift and I will take me uh, create a bunch of cursors um, at the end of the lines that I have. So if I wanted to continue editing these. Then another cool keyboard shortcut that I use all the time is if I select a particular keyword or word in my code and I want to select all instances of that word, um, I can go ahead and hit Control D and it will select each instance of that word. Super useful if you're editing a really big file. And then lastly, um, if you are interested in uh, focusing on just your code, uh, control K and then hitting Z opens up Zen mode, which uh, blocks up all the distracting little bits and pieces around VS Code and just gives you the editor over here. Uh, which I find quite cool if I'm trying to focus on something and I don't want all the distracting uh, stuff around. Uh, to exit, you can hit Control K Z again, and that brings up the default editor. Then uh, last, uh, an honorable mention is the testing suite that comes with um, VS Code. Um, if you are familiar with setting up unit tests, this is just a convenient way for you to uh, have a visual interface to run your Python tests over here. Um, if you're interested in that, I actually have a video about uh, unit testing in Python. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.